I'm going to tell you the worst thing I ever saw in jail. This story never left my memory, mostly because of the twist that seemed straight out of a movie. And the unavoidable appearance of Karma herself at the very end that makes this story one that refuses to let you forget it. Let's waste no time, here's the story. It was an uneventful day in the cell block, so far, but that would change in a horrific way soon enough, after a new inmate walked through the door. Pretty much all the inmates did what I did, gave him a quick glance, checked for any gang tattoos, gave him a once over to see if anything important could be deduced from these 10 seconds or so of watching him. We all seemed to come to the same conclusion. No, nothing interesting going on there. But there was something interesting going on, and it was being whispered by and to specific inmates in the background of the routine card games and prison workouts. This slight change in movement I noticed was being done by only the members of the 974s, a gang also known as the Insane Gangster Disciples. And what they were plotting for this new inmate was just that insane. And since I was playing chess with pretty much the only member who hadn't had a fellow member mutter the breaking news into his ear, I figured I might overhear the reason for this change in atmosphere soon enough. And I did. One of the nines eased on over to our four seat table, half full, and grabbed the third seat. He waited a few for me to seemingly be lost in thought over his buddy's rook putting my king in check and just what I planned to do about that. And he leaned in close. From what I picked up, the new guy wasn't new to them. He had been in this jail a year and a half now and had earned himself a green light from the high rank 974s to be smashed on sight. I didn't hear all the details of how he earned it, but it sounded like he found himself in a situation with the other 974 members eight months ago in a previous cell block. Whatever happened, however it played out, it ended with this new guy snitching on the 974 members. And although he didn't have the slightest clue that this cell block was full of different members of that gang, they knew exactly who he was, and they were gonna carry out their orders before he had time to learn who populated this cell block and run. Meanwhile, the new inmate wasn't too shy, wasn't too loud and annoying, social enough, and was just finding his way around his new home. Meeting a few inmates, having a little small talk, it was a sunny day, so eventually he decided to hit the small rec court and get a little sun, maybe do a few push-ups, while all along, the 974s were discussing how they planned to push up. One member spoke up, who they call Weto. Apparently, that's what the Hispanics call white guys who they get along with, which was the case for him because he was also extremely fluent in Spanish. He said, let me be the one to go get him. I'll get him alone and do it for the gang. No need for any others to participate and risk getting sent to solitary confinement since we can guarantee from experience that this guy will snitch on whoever gets him. He said he didn't care about the risk himself because he had just went to court that morning and received his six year prison sentence. He was getting on the prison bus in the morning, and all inmates knew from experience that any trouble you get in at this county jail doesn't follow you to state prison, even though the staff would try very hard to convince us that it does. Unfortunately for the new inmate, where he currently was and what he was currently doing happened to be perfect for the nines. Outside, in a small closed off area, heavy metal door between the rec court and the guard station no direct line of sight from the guard to them. They didn't hesitate. They didn't want to wait and risk this inmate leaving this opportune area. One by one, they moseyed out onto the rec court, nonchalantly, not in a big group, which signaled trouble. Two would go to a corner and talk. Two or three more would go to a wall and talk about how their phone call with their girlfriend went. The new inmate never knew it, but he was surrounded. He suspected nothing. He laughed at his newly befriended workout partner's joke before dropping to his hands and feet and cranking out a set of push-ups. He was zoned in, trying to make the most of each rep, pushing hard to do those last 10. He was pushing himself, sweating, getting tired, face staring at the concrete ground while he winced with effort. 
and that's when it happened. Beto pushed off the wall he was leaning on with his foot, took two wind-up steps towards the new inmate like a field goal kicker does, and he kicked him right in his face with all his might. When describing it, the only thing that really comes to mind is how Charlie Brown would kick or try to kick the football when Lucy would hold it for him. He kicked it like it was for a million dollars and connected right with his face. And then the new inmate immediately collapsed onto the ground like a rag doll. While simultaneously making this sound, it was air just gushing out of his mouth, making his lips do the motorboat noise as if he was deflating into the hard concrete. For a second, everyone was silent the inmate didn't move. Then, suddenly, in a semi-conscious daze, he let out a grunting moan of pain, partly muffled due to his lips being smushed into the ground. A few seconds, and he let out another one, twice as loud, almost loud enough to be concerning. The guard might have heard it, and if it was any louder, he may rush out here, causing everyone there, even the innocent bystanders, not in the gang, to now be under investigation. As this was going through everyone's mind, he let out a third one, nerve-rattlingly loud. It echoed off the concrete floor and walls. Everyone rushed to file inside to the cell block, leaving the inmate squirming around in confusion and pain. Now, all this happened just as count time was announced. The staff do it three to four times a day, all inmates line up by their doors while the guards count each person to make sure no one escaped. We assume the count will be one short today, and the guard will go check the rec courts eventually to see if the missing inmate, for some reason, is out there and didn't go line up. But that didn't happen. Before the guard got to his cell door, the new inmate stumbled inside. Even from way across the cell block on the top floor, I could see half of his face had already turned dark purple. He was bleeding too. He went into his cell, wiped the blood off, and stood where he should for count time. Maybe trying to take the beating like a man and get through the count, not snitching, and figure out the rest later? Or maybe he knew that as soon as the guard saw his face, this whole block would get shut down. Everyone in your cells, we're getting to the bottom of this. Which is exactly what happened. Two hours after everyone had been locked down in their cells, captain of the jail comes in and begins the routine of going cell to cell, asking each inmate to show him their knuckles for any signs of recent swelling, cuts, or redness, and also ask for them to give up the names of who did it. When he got to my cell, he had two pieces of paper in his hand. After me and my cellmate showed our knuckles and told him that we didn't see anything, the captain informed us that he knew a lot more about the situation than anyone may think, and what he revealed about this situation was chilling. He said nobody had told any names yet, but that regardless, he has a strong feeling he knows who is behind it. As a seasoned captain, he knows details about all the violent happenings in this jail and he knows all about one that took place eight months ago in another cell block, and it involved some 974 members. Now, expecting him to finish the sentence with, and it also involved the inmate who was attacked today, I felt my eyes grow wide as he instead told me, and it also involved the inmate who was attacked today's twin brother. <laughs> He flipped the two papers around and held them up to us. Two separate inmate file records and mugshots. Two different first names, one last name. Man who was attacked today had just gotten arrested in the middle of the night last night and made it to this cell block as his first stop after processing. His twin brother had been given time served with probation three months ago and had been released. Weto had gotten the wrong man man who just got here, who never snitched on anybody. Before leaving, the captain said whoever does get found responsible is looking at much more than just a trip to solitary confinement, felony charges. The twin brother Weto kicked was expected by medical to be blind in one eye for the rest of his life. The kick 
had shattered the twin's eye socket. I was stunned and watched the captain continue his trip around the cell block. Since Weto never used his knuckles, he never got caught red-handed, and apparently nobody snitched because Weto never got taken to solitary. And he left for prison the very next morning. I figured I'd never see Weto again after that, but I did, many years down the line in prison. Weto randomly got housed in my cell block one day. He had lost weight, not in a healthy way either. His eyes looked different, a little scared. He recognized me and came over to talk. I quickly realized something was wrong with him. This wasn't the same guy I knew from jail. He started to ramble on to me about how he had to get out of his previous cell block because there were demons in there. Demons were after him. I'm telling you, demons, man. I had a look that you have when you're trying not to laugh in someone's face who's blurting out a bunch of nonsense. He saw this and kind of laughed to himself and said, Hey, I, I know, man, I know. It sounds like I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man. I didn't really know what to say, but he continued on. He even called me into his cell, telling me how he smokes K2 and you know something about being beaten and chased with knives for debts he owed for K2 by his own brothers. He kept on going about how K2 is the portal to demons and he grabbed a bible and started flipping to pages showing me verses that say things about the smoke of the incense doing this or that was insisting that the incense mentioned in the Bible is K2 and that this is all some prophecy and crazy stuff like that. I listened a little longer, nodding my head, thinking of an excuse to end this and just leave his cell. The call for lunchtime did that for me, and I left to go grab my cup and spork for the cafeteria. On the way, I thought to myself, wow. Clearly what happened is Weto was X'd out of the 974s by the 974s for all these issues and who knows what that he seems to have gotten himself into. And if that's not bad enough, he sounds like he ran away from them before they were satisfied that they had properly removed him from this gang. Ironically, he had now entered a cell block full of other 974 members likely plotting on him as he had once plotted on the twin brother, which I doubt he was aware of, especially since the K2 had clearly fried his brain. And so, although Weto was clearly no longer an insane gangster disciple, he was at least insane. <laughs>